Hi guys, and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. I do tons of furniture flips, trash to treasures, curbside pickups, Goodwill flips, all that kind of stuff. So if you like that kind of content, go ahead and click subscribe down below so you can see more of my future projects. And I have a huge goal that I'm trying to hit by the end of this year, so I would really appreciate it if you would help me get to 50,000 subscribers. Today's video is going to be a gigantic collaboration where a bunch of big YouTubers are getting together and giving you our top five favorite 2020 furniture flips. So if you are needing some inspiration or in a rut or you just like watching a good before and after, then make sure that you hit up that playlist after my video and watch everyone else's amazing top five. My first project that I'm going to show you was a desk that I got from somebody. They left it out on their curb for me and she has actually given me tons of free furniture in the past so I'm really thankful for this woman and when I got the desk it looked like it was in really bad shape like I could understand why she was just going to put it on her curb but it was one of those projects where it just had so much hidden potential that you couldn't see right off the bat when you looked at this piece in the condition that it was in. So it really took digging and a lot of sanding to find the treasure buried underneath all the destroyed finish that was on the top of this piece. But once I sanded it down, I realized that it has a purple heart inlay on here. And I learned that actually from Google and from my viewers. So I had tons of people comment on this video saying that they had this exact same desk or one very similar to it. I even had a viewer send me an email with a picture of hers because I just could not believe that there were other desks out there like this one. I had never seen one and it's just so beautiful I couldn't believe it. But anyways, I noticed that there's obviously tons of veneer issues on this piece and it has aged poorly in the desert and I filled in all the little veneer issues and then went ahead and painted it in a flat black. This flat black I thought was going to be really masculine and I wanted to give it kind of like a leathery finish, very matte and smooth to the touch. So I chose to paint it and then seal it in a clear wax. The woman that gave me this piece, I actually surprised her and gave it back to her finished. She was very excited about it, but I knew that she would take good care of this piece with a wax finish. Had it been going to a child or somebody who was unfamiliar with waxes, I would have definitely used a poly, but I have faith that she was going to do right by this piece and make sure she takes care of that wax finish. For the hardware, it was all there. So all I did was just clean it up with some metal polish and it was absolutely beautiful. Not good as new, better than new, I think. <laughs> that beautiful aged finish is something to behold. And once I had finished all the waxing, I buffed it nicely with a lint-free rag to give it a very smooth but sort of like matte shiny finish not too shiny more of a matte color and look at how gorgeous it turned out look at that you guys that was hiding underneath all of that nastiness <laughs> I love this piece so much and that is why I believe this is like my favorite of all time flip just because of how surprising it was in the end compared to how it started in the beginning let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this before and after. For my second project, I did another desk. I really love doing desks. I feel like desks can be really personal and custom and you can do really neat things with them without it being too over the top in a room. And it's also a place where oftentimes we need to be inspired or relaxed so we can really customize these pieces to suit what we're going to be using it for. This piece I got from a curbside pickup, and I think I actually got this from the same woman that I got the first desk from. She gives me tons of free furniture. She's an absolutely wonderful person. Claudia, if you are watching, thank you so much. Since this piece was solid wood, I was able to do whatever I wanted with it. It was in really good shape structurally. I didn't really have to fix anything on it. And I wanted to go with a very moody blue color for the paint job on here. And I ended up painting the sides of the drawers, which I don't do very often unless the piece has a lot of giving room around the drawers when they slide. And the top had so many coats of paint on it and it took me a very long time and many pieces of sandpaper to get this off. But I just don't like using stripper. It doesn't work that well here in the desert. It dries too quickly, unfortunately, so I just had to put in the sweat equity. 
Then I went ahead, stained the top, and I used the DIY brand for the clear coat on the top as well. And I liked that because, you know, it's it has a lot less chemicals in it, so it's safer to use, although it is not as durable as polyurethane, in my opinion. If you have any questions about this piece, please leave them down in the comment section below. I love talking with you guys and answering your questions about my projects. Or if you have any other questions about your own projects, you can always email me at desertdiytime at gmail.com. I love helping people out. Here is the final look of this desk. This is why I started falling in love with blue, and that is why I added it to my top five, just because it was very influential to me personally to do this piece. And I also discovered that you can buy these drawer poles on Amazon in bulk, and that was also a big game changer for me and my projects, as well as my channel. So if you are interested in these drawer poles, they're super cheap, like 50 cents a piece, and I'll have them linked in my Amazon store below. Project number three. This one was when I first started doing glam pieces. So I've always liked glamorous things and shiny sparkly finishes, but I've always been afraid to try them. I don't know. I've, I'm always, I've always been kind of a tomboy, so I never wanted to admit that I had a girly side to me. And doing this piece was very freeing in that I got to express the girly side within me. I also discovered that I am in love with white pearl and any kind of pearl paint finish. I have a green pearl project coming up in the future. I just have so many projects to finish that I don't know when that one will be done. But this piece turned out so beautiful that I just, I had to have this in my top five. And I ended up selling this piece. I wish I could have kept it. It just didn't fit. I didn't have a need for it, I should say, in my master bedroom like I had intended. So unfortunately, I don't still have this piece, but it was another learning experience for me and just so inspirational for future projects as well as just being an artist and experimenting with different mediums. Also, I cannot forget to mention these knobs. These are gorgeous and I definitely intend to use them again. I bought them on Amazon just like I did the last ones and you can buy them in bulk for a very affordable price. I'll have them linked down below in my Amazon store as well. But look at the luster on this piece. It is so gorgeous. I, you can't get that kind of finish with just a, a, a plain paint. Even if you use a glossy paint, it won't have that same luster. So I highly recommend experimenting with pearl additives in your paint projects. Let me know what you think of pearl down in the comment section below. Number four was a surprise. I did not realize the age of this piece when I first started on it until I had lots of people comment to let me know that it was a washstand. So... Back in the day when people didn't have master bathrooms attached to their bedrooms, they would have a washstand, which could be also referred to as a dry sink, where you would have a big, nice bowl and a pitcher, and you could clean your hands or your face or whatever you're cleaning up before bed or when you're starting your day and, and cleaning up to get ready. But this piece, I believe, because of the things that I found inside it, uh, I believe that this was actually at a shoe store or like a shoe repair shop because it had some tools in there that were related to shoes that you wouldn't normally have on hand unless it was your specialty. So I believe this was probably in a shoe professional's workplace. And I just cleaned this up really well with the sander to get a nice smooth finish. And then, like I was mentioning before with my blue desk, I am just so in love with blues right now. And I thought that this would look just so handsome and masculine with a blue and wood finish. And that is what I did. Number five is my super bright yellow bench. If you have been watching my channel for a while, you've definitely seen this bench. And I think this was kind of a turning point for me much like these other pieces where I learned that I can go wild with my color choices and still create beautiful pieces. I don't need to stick in my blue bubble and, you know, keep making neutral things, although I still do like making neutral things. I just, this little curbside bench changed my life. <laughs> it was also when I started realizing that I had a higher purpose for my furniture flipping, which was to donate my pieces to kids that are aging out of foster care 
that don't really have a whole lot uh, in the furniture department and I have quite the surplus in the furniture department so it really is like the least I could do I I really wish I could do more for foster children. We were foster parents for a little while and it was just too heartbreaking going through um, the process and when the kids end up, you know, leaving or, you know, you get so attached to the kids and it's really hard to say goodbye. So my heart just couldn't handle that. And instead, this bench showed me that I can help in different ways and it doesn't have to be in ways that break my heart. <laughs> And instead, it was really exciting, and the look on their faces when they see the pieces and they get to realize that they are they belong to them, you know, and I don't know, I, it's just so worth it. It's way better than sitting around waiting for somebody on Marketplace to buy the piece from me. I know that's for sure. But back to the point, which is that 2020 really has changed my life in many different ways some good some bad I'm sure that many of you can relate to that um, let me know in the comment section down below if this year has been full of changes for you outside of just dealing with COVID but I learned a lot about myself and I feel like I've gotten braver and just owned my own personality and my own art and what I'd like and what I enjoy making instead of having to make things that I think people will buy. Um, it's really been a freeing experience for me and all of these five projects have really helped me with all of that. I've learned so, so, so much and I have decided that my goal for next year is that I'm going to slow down and smell the roses and really personally enjoy each and every one of the projects that I give so that they are full of love when I do give them away. And this was one of those pieces already that is fulfilling that goal for me. Also, I want to know what are your guys' goals for 2021? I love hearing other people's goals and missions and inspiration. So let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to head over and watch all of the amazing furniture flips, everybody's top fives that are going to be in the playlist with this video. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe and support my channel, and I will see you next time. Bye!